Welcome to this tutorial on using the Wolvesville API with Node.js. In this video, we'll be introducing you to the powerful Wolvesville API and showing you how to use it to build your own custom applications or integrations. Whether you're new to APIs or an experienced developer, this tutorial is designed to be easy to follow and beginner friendly. Here are what you'll learn in this video. What the Wolvesville API is and what it's used for. The different endpoints available in the Wolvesville API. How to sign up for an API key and authenticate your requests. How to make API requests using the Fetch API in Node.js. How to handle errors and troubleshoot any issues that may arise. How to use one of the endpoints in your own applications or integrations as an example. Now that we've introduced the topic, Let's dive into the video without getting bogged down in too many details. The Wolvesville API is an interface that allows developers to access data and functionality related to the game Wolvesville.com. With the API, you can build your own custom applications or integrations that interact with the game in various ways. For example, you could use the API to retrieve information about players, create clan bots, or track clan progress. To get started with the Wolvesville API, you'll need to sign up for an API key. This key will allow you to authenticate your API requests and access the various endpoints. You can sign up for an API key by visiting the Wolvesville website at wolvesville.com and going to the settings. From there, click on the Wolvesville API tab to purchase an API key for 100 gems. Now that you have your API key, it's time to start making API requests using Node.js. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Fetch API to send HTTP requests to the Wolvesville API and retrieve a list of available role icons. Don't worry if you're new to Node.js. We'll walk you through each step and provide example code that you can copy and paste. We first need to download Visual Studio Code and Node. Visual Studio Code is a popular code editor developed by Microsoft, and it's free to use on Windows, macOS, and Linux. In this video, we'll show you how to get Visual Studio Code up and running on your computer. Step 1. Download Visual Studio Code and Node. To download Visual Studio Code, go to the Visual Studio Code website at code.visualstudio.com. On the homepage, you'll see a button that says Download for Windows, Download for Mac, or download for Linux, depending on your operating system. Click on the appropriate button to start the download. Similarly, go to nodeds.org to download it. Step 2. Install Visual Studio Code and Node. Once the download is complete, open the installer file and follow the prompts to install Visual Studio Code and Node on your computer. The installation process is straightforward and shouldn't take too long. Once the installation is finished, you'll be ready to launch Visual Studio Code. This code is using the Fetch API to make a JET request to the Wolvesville API to retrieve a list of role icons. The getRandomRollIcon function is defined as an async function, which means that it is a function that returns a promise and can use the await keyword to wait for the promise to resolve. The API underscore KEE is a string representing the user's API key, which is needed to authenticate the request to the Wolvesville API. The API underscore URL is a string representing the base URL for the Wolvesville API, and the endpoint is a string representing the specific endpoint being accessed in the API, in this case, the items slash role icons endpoint. The headers object is used to specify the HTTP headers for the request. In this case, it includes an authorization header with the API underscore key an accept header with the value application slash chazon, and a content type header with the value application slash chazon. The fetch function is used to make the HTTP request, and it takes the URL of the request as its first argument. The second argument is an options object which can include various options for the request, such as the method, in this case, GET, and the headers. The response variable holds the response object returned by the fetch function. The if statement checks the status property of the response object to see if it is within the range of 200 to 299, which indicates a successful HTTP request. If the status code is not within this range, it throws an error with the message request failed, 
dollar response status text, where response status text is the status message associated with the status code. If the request was successful, the response response.json method is used to parse the response body as json. The resulting object is then stored in the role icons variable and returned by the function. The main function is an async function that calls the getRandomRollIcon function and logs the result to the console. If an error occurs during the request, it is caught by the try, catch block, and logged to the console with the console error function. Finally, the main function is called to execute the code. This will make a JET request to the Wolvesville API and log the response to the console. If you encounter any issues when using the Wolvesville API, there are a few things you can try to troubleshoot the problem. 1. Check the status code of the response to see if it indicates a successful request, 200 to 299, or an error, 400 to 599. The response status text property may also provide additional information about the error. 2. Make sure you are using the correct API key and that it has not expired or been revoked. You can check your API key by visiting the Wolvesville website and going to the settings. 3. Make sure you are using the correct API URL and endpoint for your request. You can find a list of available endpoints in the Wolvesville API documentation. 4. If you are making a POIST or PUD request, make sure the request body is in the correct format, usually JSON. 5. Check for any typos or mistakes in your code. In this tutorial, we learned how to use the Wolvesville API with Node.js to retrieve a list of role icons. We walked through the process of signing up for an API key, making API requests using the Fetch API, and handling errors. To further explore the capabilities of the Wolvesville API, you can refer to the API documentation and try out some of the other endpoints available. You can also consider building more advanced applications or integrations using the API, such as creating Discord bots and clan bots or tracking player progress. If you have any questions or need further assistance, you can refer to the Wolvesville API documentation or contact the Wolvesville support team for help. Thanks for following along with this tutorial, and happy coding!